Landscapes can be tough to do in 3D, but they can also be a lot of fun. In this video, we're going to take a look at World Creator, an amazing landscape generator and the software responsible for the landscapes you just saw. Creating these landscapes was very easy to do. Once you grasp the basic principles of the software, you can create them in a matter of minutes. Even though we can use World Creator to render complete images, the typical workflow would be to export the landscape and use another 3D software for the final render. Funnily enough, World Creator has been around for quite a while, but it's only the past couple of years where we've seen some drastic advancements in its development. I used to own the first version of World Creator, and even though it could do the job, the workflow wasn't that great, and it took a lot of time to create some good looking landscapes. It looked nothing like its current implementation though. You would have to do the bulk of the work in a top-down view and you would constantly have to wait for the program to process things. It was CPU based and I'm not even sure if it was multi-threaded. Fast forward a couple of years and around I think 2018, Byte the Bytes, the company responsible for World Creator, announced some massive changes to the software. It was completely rewritten with a completely new interface and most importantly, it now uses the power of GPUs to do all the calculations. The switch to GPUs is single-handedly the one thing that allowed for the massive workflow improvements since now we can see all the adjustments in real time and in a 3D preview. The first couple of builds, at least for the Mac, have been buggy and slow, even having to use the terminal to launch the program, but the last couple of months the software feels much more solid and now we can clearly see what the developers were aiming for. It's still a little bit buggy and crash prone, but once you get past that, what it offers is really great. Let's see it in more detail. It's uh, quite easy to feel overwhelmed, but the main options we're interested in are these two buttons here, which are responsible for the landscape generation and texturing of the landscape. The other really important part is the exporting options here. The other tabs have to do with uh, populating the landscape with other objects like trees and water, but since these cannot be exported, they're not really that important. There's also this uh, simulation button here, which never really worked on the Mac, so that's that. <laughs> but uh, let's start building a really simple landscape to see how things work in practice. On the first tab of the surface menu, we set up the general broad shape of the landscape. We'll go with the default 2048 by 2048 terrain size, and since I would like to have the option to tile this in cinema, let's check the Seamless X and Seamless Z options. This will allow us to repeat the tile as many times as we want, and there won't be any seams there. The level strength at the bottom are defining different parts of the landscape and how detailed these parts will be. Let me zero everything to show you what I mean. So the level strength 1 is going to control the very broad shape of the landscape. By adjusting that we get these two hill slash mountain type shapes along with some valleys. The second level will further add more detail to the basic shape. And then the further down we go we add detail to even smaller parts of the landscape. So if I zoom in a little bit you can see that levels 9 and 10 will add surface detail to the overall bigger shape. Let's adjust the values a little bit just so we have a better default state. Now that we roughly set some basic settings for the landscape, we will jump into shaping the landscape to how we want it to look like. And to do that we go to the filters tab. This is where things get really interesting because we can get some really complex shapes here. It's a layer based system that allows us to stack and blend the details together. So we can choose from a variety of shapes based on the type of effect we want to produce. But I have a specific thing in mind so I'm going to choose the plateaus option here and then I'm going to choose rocky plateaus. As you can see everything is very interactive. I can push and pull the sliders around and everything updates very quickly. Now that I'm happy with the result, I'm going to add and close the effect. 
The beauty with this stack-based approach is that we can keep adding effects until we have the result we want. We could either create a new layer, but I'll just add another effect to the layer we already have. I want to enhance the plateaus we already created, so I'm going to add the rocky plateaus effect one more time. Of course, we can adjust the strength of the effect, or even disable and enable it to see how things look with or without the effect applied. We're in good shape so far, but I want to build some more details there. But before we do, let's go to the environment options here and adjust the sun so we can see things a little bit better. Now let's go back to our filters. I'm going to stack one more effect and that is the rigid and crossed hills. I don't want to exaggerate the effect so much, so I'm going to zero the first couple of steps and also lower the higher ones. We're doing really good so far. I will add one more filter and that has to do with erosion. So I'm going to add a hydro simulation filter. This has a bunch of options that have to do with how water and wind reacts with the landscape, so it might look overwhelming, but the options are quite easy to figure out. It's going to be very tedious to go through every single option, so for now let's lower the intensity of the effect and then add it to the stack. Finally, I'm going to add one more shape. Let's go to the rigid option and pick mountain range. I don't want this effect to be applied everywhere, so I'll just pick the convex option here. So now it's only applied to the convex areas and as you can see the effect is quite different than before. I also don't want the effect to be that strong, so I'll also reduce the overall strength a little bit more. Let's go with 50. As you can see with just a couple of clicks, we have a great looking landscape. Now let's move on to the texturing part. The texturing is as easy as the landscape creation. We have a really powerful tool set in our hands and a lot of control on how each part is colored. Like with the building part, we can stack different layers to create something more complex. Let's start with something simple. Let's first apply a color gradient. I'm gonna go with this option here and it will enable the height gradient option. The low regions of the landscape will have a darker color, while the higher ones a lighter one. Let's add another set, and with this one we only want to control the higher parts of the landscape. So I will first pick the height select option, and then adjust the slider to disregard the lower parts. We can furthermore affect where the color will be applied by adding some more rules. For example, I only want certain slopes to have this color. So I will enable the slope select, and then adjust the sliders again. We can apply the same kind of process with all the other layers. For example, this stack is only applied to the convex areas of the landscape. The grass stack also has a height rule that limits it to the lower parts of the landscape. And finally, the other grass layer is applied to the concave areas and is also limited by height and by slope. This coloring might not look like much, but where it gets really powerful is the fact that we can now export these colored areas as heat maps and then use those on a third party app like Quixel Mixer to texture the landscape in a more detailed manner. Let me export all the necessary maps first, and then let's jump into Quixel Mixer. Our final maps contain a height map, a normal map, and then the heat maps based on the color selections we created in World Creator. We will use these as masks on Mixer. I've already hooked everything up, so let's see how everything blends together. We first have our displacement set up, and then we slowly build the details by stacking up different surfaces and blending them together with the heat maps we prepared in World Creator. Mixer is a really nice texturing tool because the library of textures available is just excellent, and the options to blend things together are very artist friendly. Let me add one more layer to show you how easy it is. We can choose from a variety of different surfaces, and then we just apply it to the surface. We can choose the area the surface affects, change the color, and also further refine the area by using masks. It couldn't get any simpler than that. As you can see, the combo of World Creator plus Quixel Mixer and finally Cinema 4D is quite amazing. I always look forward to the Cinema 4D part because this is where it all comes together. This is where you breathe life into the scene and where you can see the environment in its full potential. But I digress, let's get back to World Creator. 
Like with any other program, there are some issues. Not enough to deter you from using the program, but it's something you should be aware of in order to avoid frustration. The first one has to do with the exporting of displacement, normal maps, and also heat maps. Even if you use the same exporting options, the normal map will be flipped vertically. That confused me a lot in the beginning, but once you know it, it's easy to fix. Also, when loading a previously saved project, sometimes the scene doesn't load up correctly, so there will either be errors on the landscape, or you won't see anything other than sky. If you open the project once more, then everything will load up correctly. Another thing that you should be aware of is that you need a really powerful GPU. I have the 16GB Vega64 card, and in really big landscapes with a lot of detail, things can slow down. But in regular resolutions, a card as powerful as the Vega64 will be absolutely fine. Finally, don't forget to frequently save your project. The application will crash often. At least the Mac version is very crash prone. I had one more landscape created for this video with a really nice snowy texture, but right when I saved the project, the application crashed and I lost everything. So save as often as possible. That way when the app crashes and it will crash, you will lose as little progress as possible. Other than that, I would say Work Creator is a must-have, especially if you're doing a lot of work requiring external environments. It's so much fun to use, and that mainly has to do with the fact that everything is very interactive. So even though there are many controls and options, it's obvious what each control does. You just adjust the controls, and you see immediately the effect it has on the landscape. I wish we could export the trees and grass elements available within the app, but I understand that this is mostly a licensing issue. Anyway, long story short, give War Creator a try. And with that, I think we reached the end of this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.